Friends, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming today. Look at this tremendous turnout in support of Tyler. It, it fills all of our hearts. Wonderful. We are here today for a reason. Tarek Lubani and John Grayson were arrested in Cairo, Egypt on August 16, 2013. As of today, they have been imprisoned without charge for 39 days. It has now been nine days that they have gone without food in protest of their imprisonment. We are here today to demand their release by the Egyptian government. We are here today to spur Prime Minister Harper and our own government on to advocate for Tarek and John's release at the highest levels. We are here today to share in our support for these two exceptional individuals who have been wrongly imprisoned. <laughs> Associate Professor in the Division of Emergency Medicine at Western. For the next 20 or 25 minutes, we are going to be hearing some personal insight from friends and colleagues of Tarek and John's. And then we're going to complete our rally with a peaceful march around Victoria Park. I say peaceful because that is the only way Tarek and John would have wanted this rally to be. To mirror their own ideals, we must be strong, we must be vehement, we must not shy away from our task, but we must do so in a peaceful and ethical fashion. Most of you know by now what happened to Tarek and John. They were in transit through Cairo to Gaza, where Tarek has an ongoing commitment to advanced medical education and emergency medical care. John was pre prepping for a documentary and film project. On August 16th, they were arrested. I can tell you that we have had specific and personal communication from John and Tarek that they in fact were arrested while asking assistance from the police in Egypt. The day of their arrest was a horrible one in Cairo, with large protests and widespread violence. Tarek and John were arrested along with multitudes of other people who were swept up by the police and thrown in jail. Tarek and John have been in jail ever since. One might reasonably ask, what were these two doing over there? Egypt is an unstable place right now. In fact, Tarek told many of us before he went that he was quite concerned about the situation there. Why did they go? Let me tell you about what motivates Tarek. I traveled this same route with Tarek last year when he took 15 health professionals into the, medical, into the Middle East for a medical teaching mission. We saw people living in circumstances that would be mind-boggling bo for us in Canada. What that trip taught all of us was that these people across the world are just like you and me. All they wanted out of life was a chance to raise their kids, spend time with their families, and have hope in life. The basic humanity within all of us is shared and is global. The reality of life is that some of us are lucky enough to live in privileged circumstances and others are born to poverty, violence, and conflict. Tarek is deeply cognizant of the inequality that life offers and spends his life affirming and supporting the humanity within all of us. While most of us watch the news and shake at our heads at how bad the situation is and then go back to our first world problems, Tarek devotes his life to doing something about the gross inequalities in the world on a daily basis. Whether it's a homeless person in downtown London, 
a cancer patient in pain in the emergency department, or a cardiac patient in a village in South America, Tarek recognizes that each of these people deserve respect, access to care, and dignity. I'm not exaggerating when I say that when he leaves the emergency department, he'll go to work in a shelter. When he takes his vacations, he goes off to offer his unique skills in conflict zones or troubled areas around the world. He's one of the most humanitarian people that many of us have ever met. He is a vigorous, yet always peaceful, peaceful activist for causes that address the inequities in our world. That is why the initial allegations from the Egyptian prosecutor of Tariq and John storming a police station were so blatantly ludicrous. All of us who know him know that the only weapon that Tariq would have been using would have been his stethoscope. And the only thing he could be guilty of would be helping his fellow man. We had a lecturer last week at the university mention the quote from Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see in the world. My colleague sitting beside me leaned over and said to me, that's Tarek. And you know what? That is Tarek. He doesn't believe in talk, he believes in action. Every day, he is the change that he wants to see in the world. From everything I've heard about John Grayson, not only is he a widely respected and award-winning filmmaker, he is also deeply committed to humanitarian ideals, and in particular to championing, championing causes of the disadvantaged in the world. The world needs these kind of people. Canada needs these kind of people. These are the kind of people who inspire us to find something greater within ourselves. But now is the time that Tarek and John need us. They were continuing a proud Canadian tradition of helping others in need. Mountains of evidence, affidavits, and statements from every organization they have worked with have extolled the quality of their contributions and the need for their release. It's time now for Canadians to stand up for two of our own and demand their release. I'm gonna ask you some questions. I ask you now, is it just for the Egyptian government to continue to imprison Tariq and John? No! I ask you now, should Canada have normal diplomatic relations with Egypt until Tariq and John come home? No! I ask you now, should Canada and Egypt do business while Egypt continues to imprison, imprison Tariq and John? No! We need to show as a nation that we look after our citizens and ensure that they are treated justly. Not only, the, not only that, this issue is even bigger than Tarek and John. When humans have conflict, which is a natural state of the human condition, there are individuals who put themselves in harm's way to go and assist those in conflict. And individuals who go in to help these people do so without regard for their religion race or creed. These are often physicians, but are often other people who are medical healthcare professionals or artists such as John. People who go to offer their humanitarian assistance need a safe, a safe place to work when they are tending to our humanity while we are in conflict. And we need to protect that principle for Tariq and John. We need Prime Minister Harper to go to the highest levels of the Egyptian leadership. Yeah. 
We need to show as a nation that we stand behind our people. We need to show Tarek and John that if they can de devote their lives to shining a light on those in need, we can devote a brief amount of our time to helping them out. You may ask what you can do. Go to the website, tarikandjohn.com. For all of you out here who I, I know are deeply participating in the cause, for people listening at home, go to the website. You will see some very specific actions that you can do and participate in to assist in free, freeing Tarek and John. I'm gonna close by asking you, are we going to bring Tarek and John home? Are we going to bring Tarek and John home? Yeah. I know we will.